Hello again, it's me, and today I'm going to be using the MPC to make music. This video is going to be a tribute, I don't know if you call it, it's not dead, but like a, a thank you to the MPC Live. It is probably the only piece of equipment that I have other than the laptop with loads of DAWs on it where I can literally sit down with my feet up and make a tune. So today in this video I'm going to be using the MPC alone uh, with some samples that I've collected over the years. I'm going to be making drum and bass, I'm going to be making a liquid tune, I'm going to be chopping breaks, I'm going to be putting bass lines down, I'm going to be doing some real-time automation and I'm going to try and create a intro, a verse and a drop. We'll see how that goes. Really the only reason I'm doing this is because I don't think the MPC Live gets enough uh, credit for how absolutely amazing it is. It's sort of got this like stigma that it's not like the 4000, the 4000 was the best one. The 2000 XL is much better than the... I don't give a shit, I don't care. I had a 2500, it was all right. I didn't really know what I was doing when I was using it, so I sold it. I then got a 5000, uh, really liked the 5000, again, didn't use it to anywhere near its full potential, had it for about a year and made about two tracks on it. The rest of the time it was just there to sort of look fat. Kind of pissed that I didn't use it to its full potential. Had a few years off from MPCs, used Machine for quite a long time. That was pretty much it in terms of the MPC-ish way. When I say MPC-ish way, I mean other things that copy the MPC layout, like a machine or something like that. The reason I got Machine was because I thought it was like the MPC, but it was just easier to use. The MPC is so deep, you can literally do anything with any noise in it. If you can't do it on the MPC, you probably shouldn't be making music. I know that's a controversial thing to say, but again, I, as usual, I don't really care. If as long as you've got an idea in your head and you maybe read the manual or put time in to understand what it can do, you can get some ideas down pretty quick. The other thing is most of the videos I've done recently have just completely neglected that and just talked about like, oh, the SP-16, I'm using that for drums. Like, okay, cool. Uh, I've done about three or four videos on the SP-16 so far. It is sick, it's still quality. But the main problem with it was I couldn't make a full tune on it. I mean, I could if I sat down and gave myself like three days, but I don't have three days. I have maybe two hours in between other things that I'm doing or like an hour spare where my kid's not asking me random shit that makes no sense other than to him. So I thought, why not? I've got an hour spare on a lunch break. I should actually be eating now, but I've got an idea for a tune. So I'm going to put my feet up in the corner. I'm going to take the NPC live off its stand, off its stand and uh, onto my lap where I'm most comfortable uh, and make music. I'm not going to talk through it. You're just, it's just going to be a fly on the wall of what I'm doing as I'm doing. So yeah. Safe.
There we go. Put it back on its stand now. NPC Live, there. Helping me make the idea of probably the next tune that I'm probably gonna either pitch or put out independently. Obviously it's a vocal that's been used loads and I literally just picked the first vocal sample like program that I'd made a few years ago. But it worked, it was in key. I didn't even time it properly, I just chopped it. And as you heard, it was pretty bad chops. I'd have to go in and refine it. But the idea's there. Uh, and that's pretty much the full tune. I'll be honest with you, like all I'll do is probably layer up some more synth parts, put maybe an arpeggio in with like the um, Minotaur or the Pro 2, probably thicken that sub out because the sub was a bit weak. Uh, and I'll probably just put that with the SV1. But yeah, the majority of it's down. Melody, bass line, drums, little vocal hook thing. Uh, now it's just about arrangement. I could do the whole arrangement in that to be fair. I mean, there's other tunes that I've made that I've done it all in, but yeah. It's brilliant. It's so good. It's so quick. And I'm nowhere near like an expert on the MPC Live. It's just basic things I was doing. Sample editing, sequencing, a little bit of automation on one of the knobs and that, just to get a bit of movement into it. No real effects, bit of reverbs, channel strip effects. The only thing I really did was like EQ. Most of the EQ was done with the filters that come with it. So like in the program editor, for each sample, you can pick like ADSR, like amp envelope, filter envelope, and a specific filter. So most of the EQing was done just using the filters, either high pass or low pass. Yeah, 
That's about it, really. I might do a video of trying to make something more than a drum beat on the SP16 next. Not promising it, though, because I'll probably end up smashing it against the wall on camera, um, which probably won't get uploaded, and you'll just see a massive hole in the desk. But yeah, love the MPC Live. It gets nowhere near enough credit for how amazing it is. Just again, like before I said earlier, no, oh, it's not as good as the 3000. I don't care, but it doesn't sound as amazing as I'm going to put it into Pro Tools anyway and just mess with it anyway. Getting the idea down, touch screen, zero faff, like feet up, doesn't have to be plugged in. Like I can now go in and just sort out separate outputs for the kicks and that, which I normally do. But the idea, bosh, quick. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Thank you for watching as, as usual. I might as well say the general YouTube stuff. Comment, like, subscribe. If you subscribed already, thank you. Um, keep watching stuff that I put out, I suppose. Uh, yeah, peace.